Hey y'all, we are officially almost at the finish line of Shara Ilembi guys. We are on episode 10, halfway through. I can't, I can't, I can't for the life of me. Yeah. So let's get right into it. Let's not waste any more time. It first begins with Nandi and she is packing up at the Barbie house. She's ready to leave with her kids um, and they are headed to the Mtetwa kingdom because yeah, it's, it's, it's too hard for her to be where um, she built a life with a getting in and he's no longer here. So yeah, it's time to, to start over again. So yeah, they leave and um, you see the return of the family that I don't like. I don't know about y'all, but the Ndwandwes, oh my gosh, is really dear, and his mom and his brother. So yeah, we see the return of them and um, the drought is, is over. So it's narrated that the drought is over and they are basically flourishing. Um, yeah. And they are having a council meeting. Yeah, it seems like a council meeting. And um, Zude is basically talking to um, his people, well, the council and his mom and his brother. And he's telling them that um, the trade has been blocked. So um, Dingeswayo basically blocked um, trading between him and Amatonga. My people, my people. <laughs> Oh, um, so yeah, basically blocked um, trading with Amatonga and yeah, it's his fault that that's happening and they need to fix it. And then we see his brother entering the meeting and greeting everybody and then greeting him back. And he says that they have been watching, um, the brother says they have been watching um, Dingeswayo and his people and has called a meeting with all the kings and it seems like something is, is up. Um, no nothing bad is up. Dingeswayo is not the type of king. Not like Senza Makona. And then it goes to um, Dingeswayo and he is also having a meeting with his council. And um, no, no, he's having the meeting with the kings. Um, and then he is um, talking about how the roots have been um, taken by Uzwite. Basically, Bagandwandu have taken the roots, the trade roots. And it is time for them to get the roots back because for 20 years the roots belonged to Gamtet. So now it's time for them to, to get them back. And um, he is going to need the help of the other kings. He wants them to come together, not just in trading, but to come together also when in a war um, so happens. So they must be prepared for such things. And then one of um, the kings, um, Madiwa. I think that's his name, Madiwa, um, says this is madness, like it's so who is gonna be um, in charge of Ibuto, so who's gonna be in charge of the warriors, who is, Adam Tate is gonna be the ones who are in charge of um, the warriors, and Dingaswaya is like yeah, because the Mtetos have the strongest army, so it's only obvious for us to be the ones who lead the, the war. And he's like, this is madness. He's not going to stay for this nonsense. He is leaving. So he he goes, he's like Asam. I don't know who he's saying Asam to. Ooh, look at my hand. <laughs> I don't know who he's saying Asam to, but he says that. And then he, he goes, none of the other kings follow him. So I guess he leaves by himself. And then it goes to um, Shaga and he is playing with his siblings. So Nandi had another... Um, child with Ugedingana, a boy. Um, so yeah, he's playing with his siblings by the beach and then it is narrated that um, Nandi knew what Shaga needed was a strong mentor and she had heard about Udingiswayo's power and wisdom and um, she had a cousin who lived Gamteto who would be able to get her a meeting with the king. So Yes, they go to Gamtetwa and and she meets with the king and he says Wawuse in Domazanam Slangi Hambela Umkosi wasilangin Kushu Bonusukulil. That is so sweet. And Use Undlungul and Nandi's like ah that is just a title now. It's she's no longer a, a queen, which is true. Like in essence, she's no longer a queen, but um, 
traditionally and um, ancestor wise she still is Sazanga Kona's queen because they did go beside her with Inyong. And then he says that Ubi has um has told him, the cousin has told him um of her situation. And um, this is now her home for her and her children and that he's gonna offer her two cows for them to be able to live off. Um, so get milk and yeah stuff like that and also um, Bia has to give her land for her to build a home I like him he's such a great king so nice but he's always been like he always had that Ubuntu yeah he always had humility and yeah he's better than his brother definitely then Nandi says um, thank you for um, the hospitality basically and as they are about to leave um, Ungoman is like may the cub stay behind which is Shaga um, and then he tells the king Guti um, the cub is the one who was fighting at the Gwabe battle that time and they're like yeah can um, Shaga stay behind and Nandi is like okay so Shaga stays behind and um, see we knew he was he, he was impressed from the first time that he saw him so the fact that he's seeing him again shagas going places so he says i saw you at the Gwabi battle and you showed bravery but shaga says that he was reckless his reckless actions cost him a lot more and um Yambosa says Yambosa is the king so Yambosa says um we always lose people in in battle in war and that is the sacrifice that they make and it's just how you deal with it after the loss and then Shaga says um, and then Shaga says my goal is to win every battle that I'm in <laughs> and both men just like smirk at him because it's just like it's it's not impossible but it's just like it's a, it's a high reach um, and then Yambosa says to him that he is a grown man now and it's time for him to stop um, following his mom around <clears throat> and to join the Mteto army. So he will be drafted into the Mteto army. And then Shaga's like, no, I will, it will be an honor for me to be in the army. And they tell him that if he is ever reckless like he was at the, the Gwabe battle, then he will be punished for it. And he's like, yeah, no, he understands. So it goes to Shaga and he's going to his mom after he leaves the king. And um, his mom is like, so will you be able to come visit um, us? again and he says um whenever they let me i will come and then he says to her your sacrifices will not be in vain and i will make the mountains bow to you and all will praise your name that is my oath to you yes he sees what his mom has done for him. He sees what she has sacrificed all this time, all these years. And this is definitely the opportunity to, for him to prove that he is worthy of that sacrifice. So yeah, he's definitely gonna make that come true. And so Shala goes to join the other warriors and they like singing and you can see that he's in awe. Like he's just like in awe of all these men. And yeah, he sees himself as being one of them one day. And yeah, so they're singing and they're singing and they're dancing. And he's just like among them, just soaking them, soaking it in. And then um, Induna comes to him and says he has been told by Ngomane who he is. So um, he is going to be drafted into the Ikri'i Izikwe. Yeah, Izikwe um, regiment. Um, and then Shaga's just like, but they look a bit young. <laughs> He is young himself. It's like they look a bit young and like they haven't developed. And this dude just laughs at him and he introduces him to, to the people that are the other boys who are, are going to be um, with him. And he says, show him to his sleep quarters. And so they like, I am the one guy is like, I am whoever. And then introduces the other two. Um, and Shaga's like, I am Shaga. <laughs> he never forgets that. <laughs> he takes so much pride in being Senzangakona's son. Like, 
if only Santa Makona could acknowledge it and only if he knew how proud his son was of him. So he says that and then the guys are like, okay, Shagaga um, Santa Makona, don't take the Nduna's um, harshness to heart. That's just how he is. Um, but he really cares. So um, yeah, let's show you around. So they leave and um, his aunt's it narrates again while Shaga is by the beach and he's training and she said Shaga was determined to make his mother proud and Shaga trained relentlessly sharpening his skills his body getting stronger and becoming the warrior that many want to have in the army yes Shaga do it for yourself and your mom and then it goes back to him walking um and then he goes back to um training to his training buddies basically the guys that he's training with and they are fighting sticks so um he is beating them like he is way better than he was when he was Gakwabe. like he has definitely sharpened his skills and gotten stronger and faster so yeah he's beating them and then the guy is just like to the one who fell get up and fight and then he puts another one so it's two people against one so two against shaga only and he is getting in there guys like he is fighting like he's never fought before and um yeah so he beats the two and then he's like is there anyone else is there anyone else who wants to take me on <laughs> um and then um Mkobozi, yes, Mkobozi is the one who takes him on and yeah, they fight, they kick each other. While they are busy doing that, um, Ngomani comes and everyone stops and they greet him and he says to Shaga, how is he settling in? Shaga's like, no, I'm settling very well. And then he asks to see um, Osomveli. Um, so, Osomveli is part of Shaga's regiment. And then it goes to Ganduandwe and it is um, Hunchback and he is flirting with the ladies weird um he's flirting with the ladies he's such a ladies man <laughs> um so yeah he gets with this one girl i just skipped that part um uh, because it made me feel uncomfortable but yeah and then we go to um shara again and he is uh, with the warriors and they are telling him a story about ilembe um Lembe apparently was um, a monster. Okay, they said he is a monster who kills other um, warriors and steals um, livestock from the king, Gamtet. So yeah, he he is just like a monster. He's a madman. And um, if Shara doesn't believe them, he can go and find out for himself. Somveli and Dingiswayo. And we find out that Sonveli is actually Dingaswayo's son. So Dingaswayo is basically, um, he says it's been a long time that, oh, the son is like, it's been a long time since we've had um, time together, like one on one. And um, Dingaswayo is just like, I am king now, so I, I don't have time for, for, for you because I have like all these things that I have to do, take care of the people, take care of this and that and that and that. And he's just like, I miss how you and I used to sit and eat together. And he says while he's taking care of everybody else, he forgot about him. And then the father's like, I am sorry. Um, Ding is like, I'm sorry because you and your sister had to grow up without me all these years. But I am definitely going to change that. And then Sonveli, we see him smiling because, yeah, I mean, that would make any other any child happy to, to spend time with his father um, after so long of not having that opportunity. And then he, Somveli is like, okay, so to make it up to me, I'm going to be joining the, the regiment tomorrow when you go to battle. And then his father laughs and goes to Shaga and the guys um, in their quarters. And um, one of the guys is basically saying Shaga beat them, like Shaga showed them flames. Um, he can beat them, but he can't um, beat them when it comes to girls. And then they laugh at him. They're drinking and the other one is rolling a joint. <laughs> um, and then um, Somveli comes back and he he basically brags to the guys that he is he's going to be joining the, the, the battle tomorrow. And yeah, the boys are going to be left behind. Yeah, he says that to Shaga, that boys are going to be left behind. Um, and then Induna comes in while they are talking um, 
and um, Shaga says can they are ready to join the battles tomorrow and Induna is like no I told the king that you guys are still very green and Gavuto and Shaga is like we are ready and Induna said you are very green you are not developed yet and then Shaga tries to hold him like to to turn him back because he was leaving and then Duna just like smacks him and jabs him in his throat <laughs> and everyone just like laughs at him and he falls to the ground and he's like I am telling you you are not ready be patient and he leaves and they laugh at him and Shaga's like ah oh, I don't know what you guys are laughing at and everyone's like yeah I know you're getting beat by an old man how are you going to be fighting if you're getting beat by an old man and Shaga's just like um, where does he get so much strength when he is so old and yeah he just hasn't had that much strength in his life uh, and then it is tomorrow and the king and Somveli and the, the warriors are preparing to go to battle and yeah so he gets them in the spirit by um, saying a few not words but like um, war cry war cry songs or whatever yeah something like that and yeah, so they leave and then Shao goes to Ungomane and Nduna and Nduna's just like, hey, when I'm fine, I can't you see that we, the, the adults are talking? And Ngomane's like, no, it's fine, let him, let him speak. And Shaga is like, so who is this Lembe? I, I'm hearing stories about this Lembe, some crazy man, um, a crazy madman who is killing people. And Ngomane says, um, Lembe wasn't... Um, a crazy man at first he was one of Ibuto and then he at as time went by he lost his mind and yeah he's been um, killing people and taking our livestock so I was like then why haven't people gone out to 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 hunt him and Goman is like um, we sent people out just a few days ago and none of them came back and she was like okay well I can go and and, and look for him and they laugh at him and he's like, no, those people who went out to look for him didn't have um, the smarts and a, a plan to, to get him. And everyone's just like, oh, so you think you're smarter? And um, he's like, yeah, I mean, I can, I can get it done. I just need 10 men. And Goman's like, okay, cool. We will give you 10 men, but make sure that you, you pick them Carefully. You pick them carefully so that I don't have to go and send condolences to your mother when you die. And then it goes to uh, Shaga and the guys and they are um, herding, well they pretending to be herding kettles by where um, Ilembe usually is. So um, Goboz is like no we should go and attack and Shaga's like no. If you follow my instruction, you follow my plan, we're definitely going to get this guy. And as they are talking amongst each other, a spear just comes flying and hits one of these guys. And yeah, um, Lembe's people start running towards Shaga and them. And yeah, they fight, they fight, and yeah, they beat them. And Lembe shows up. He is a giant. Uh, he's so big. So he shows up with like horns on his head. And he's just like. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, they fight him, but he is strong. They were not ready for that. Um, and then he takes some couples and hits him, throws him across the tree, and he just passes out. So Shaga's just like, what that one hit that he got to the chest is just like, he's still just like recovering from it. And then Mkopozi is taken by Ilembe, and Shaga's little regiment of men that are left i like, no, we need to go. And Shaga's like, I am not leaving one of my men behind. So he follows them. He follows them. He tracks them. He tracks them. Um, and then he finds them. And he jumps. He climbs a tree. He climbs a tree. And he jumps on top of Ilembe on his back. And he, as he jumps on him, he stabs him right here um, on his neck. And yeah, it's just like a fight. The fight is intense. I was just like, the whole time I was just like, oh, because oh, oh. I'm just like, let him not get hurt. Let him not get hurt. 
Um, so yeah, they fight. Shaga is really fast because this man is quite big. So he he saw the weaknesses that he need, the the points where he need to hit him. So he went for his ankles. He went for his knees. Um, yeah, he was just like scraping there, like wherever he got an opening, he was just here. And so yeah, he stabs him, and the last stab goes to his throat. And that is it. Lembe is down, dies, and Shaga tries to walk up. Uh, Shaga wakes up in Gabozi and calls for his people to bring him water. And then they return home. They return home to the kingdom and they are singing Ushago Buyile, Ushago Buyile. So girls are just like all over him, like all around him. No, 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 no. He's not interested in girls. He is, he has a goal. He has a destiny. He's like this, like he knows what he wants. Um, so yeah, they're singing that. And then we see his sister running to his mom and she's like, yeah, he's back. Like she's excited that he's back. So, um, Shaga meets with the, the king and um, he tells them that Ulembe is, is down, like they got him and they brought back the livestock that he, he stole. And the king is just like, how much? And he's like, we brought back 20 cows. Yes. And the king is like, okay, so I'm going to gift you with those 20 cows. <laughs> Watch the boy climb up. Watch the boy climb up. Livestock is very important livestock is very important especially in those days and especially in these times but yeah he gets um 20 cars and Shara and Shara's just like no i can't accept all 20s if it pleases the king can i share amongst the my, my people that I, I i went to to fight with because it wasn't just me who was fighting love a guy who will acknowledge that he did not do the work all by himself and he had help. So the king is like, yeah, sure. And he's like, your name will be, um, your name will thunder across the valleys and our valley because of your heroism. In front of everybody, but we see some really having this I don't know, some really didn't like Shaga from the get-go, so I think this is just like fueling his dislike for him because he has more access to Shaga to his father than he does. But yeah, anyways, and and then he goes to Shaga again and he is training by himself. He continued to strengthen himself. Um that's narrated by his aunt, continue to strengthen himself and become the leader that he was meant to be and he was proud of himself. The, the leader that he was meant to be so he has these um he has this string hanging from a tree and he's trying to get the spear through it it's like a circle and he is throwing the spear to get through it so it finally does and he's very proud of himself and then he meets Shaga meets with the king and um it's the regiment I, Izikwe, yeah the regiment that Shaga belongs to and the king is like i am appointing you from today that you will be the induna the leader of this regiment And Shaga's just like, yes. <laughs> now I'm just like, yes for him, yes. He has some title now. Um, and then he goes from the training, and um, yeah, we see him taking charge really from the get go. And it goes from them, and it goes to um, Dingaswayo and his mom. His mother is basically warning Dingaswayo's relationship with Shaga, and yeah, he he's just like saying that he must not give all this attention to him um he must remember that um Shaga is not a king and he has a son who basically is supposed to be treated the same way Shaga is yes Shaga is brave and he's a hero and he's powerful um but that is um not a good thing because one day he might want to take the the, the throne and i don't think so like he has his own home it's not like he's a commoner he is a prince in his own rights like his birthright he is a prince and if he wants the throne he can't take a throne that does not belong to him his namesake 
his namesake is Gazul. So if he wants to be fighting for the throne and wants to be king, then he has to go back to his homeland. He has to go back to his palace where he belongs to his people and rule his people, Bagazul. Not Bagamteto, because that is not his surname. Even the ancestors will be like confused, Guti. What is this? Who's this? <laughs> we don't know him. Um so he is it goes by so it, it goes like it, it goes to Dingasai and his mom and then it goes to Shaga while she's talking about how Shaga is and who he is. It just shows him that basically everything that she's saying, we are seeing it. Um and Shaga is training the men in in a way that they've never been trained before. They are walking on thorns and yeah it's, it's a lot and he's like the one thing that he wants from his people his guys is loyalty discipline and courage that is it three things and and then it, it says two years later two years later and they at a battle field and yeah so they 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 singing um Kunja, what is the song? Oh, shoot, I forgot it. <laughs> but y'all, they're singing that and Shaga's leading it. And then they bring uh, Matia, Matiani, Matiani. I think that's his name, guys. Matiani, the king that had a little tiff with Uding Eswayo, um when they had the meeting with the kings. And he was like, this is nonsense. He doesn't want Ibutsulaga Mtetwa to rule. Yeah, so they bring him and they're dragging him. And basically, they, they throw him by um Tetsu's feet okay close by and he's like to him is just like to this guy oh shaga's like you have been given so many opportunities to um pledge your allegiance to our king so what are you going to say for yourself are you going to pledge your loyalty in your alliance to our king and yeah, Ding Shui is like, that's the only thing that I've ever wanted for you to, to say, that you are with me. So are you going to do it? And this guy just like looks at Shaga, looks at Ding Shui and keeps quiet. Shaga and Ding Shui give each other a look and then it goes to them by the fire. And they are having a drink, traditional beer. And Shaga's like, I don't think it was a good idea for us to let um, Matiani go. Um... And Ding Sai is like, I am a king who doesn't just kill anybody for anything. All I wanted for him was to pledge his allegiance to me. Um, and then he just says that he wants to build respect with his people. And Shara says, um, a lion is respected by other animals because he knows how to catch his prey. Or he knows how to strike. And doesn't always doesn't hunt always so it doesn't hunt every day um and gomani says to him as a king you want to be respected and not feared which is basically the opposite that's going to happen with shaga shaga from the stories that we know shaga zulu was feared he was feared by everybody he was one of those kings who did not take any nonsense for shit so he was feared. He put fear in men, in women, in everybody. So yeah, he's gonna rule with fear. He's not gonna rule with respect. And then Gomane says, now it is time for them to focus their attention on Umagidam, Elangin. And then Shaga, when they mention that, Shaga is reminded of all the time that he was bullied by Umagidam. And he's like, um, and he's like, oh my God, damn, I shouldn't be trusted. He's, no, shouldn't be trusted. And then Somveli's like, oh, Gonja Nyazalan. And Shaga's like, yes, but he is a snake. Fat. He's a snake. And then it goes to Elangeni and we're seeing oh my God, damn, I council meeting and they have this man who is apparently on trial for what, I don't know. Um, but, um, Makedama is saying all these things and how he has all these three wives, this guy, and he still has a wandering eye. And his uncle is like, you are a cruel king. He looks like a cruel king. He's always been a cruel prince. So him turning out into a cruel king is not surprising at all. And also remembering who his father was. Um, so he's just like eating meat there and he's chewing like a madman. Like, 
No. Um, so he stands up and he takes a spear from the guy who was sharpening it and it looks, it's Tulane from um, Kubecha. He doesn't even say a word. Why is he there? But yeah, he takes a spear and yeah, he stabs this guy in front of everybody without even saying what he's guilty of. And um, he goes back down and he sits and he starts chewing on his meat again. And two messengers come from a gum tattoo. Um, and they say they have a message for him from the king. Uh, it goes to Zwide and his family and they are having a, a meeting and um, Zwide is basically saying that his army is, is stronger now and more powerful. And um, his brother's like, yeah, that may be so, but also their army has grown and become more powerful because Shaga is a powerful commander. They didn't have him then, but they have him now. And I fear that we might lose again. And I fear that will not sit well with you. <laughs> so he knows him very well. He's such a sore loser. Um, and then um, he's like, Wakedama would never pledge allegiance to Gamtetwa. It, it will never happen. He will die before that happens. And his mom is like, I have a plan because I know Makedama is going to come to us for um, support. And yeah, we're going to pretend like we are giving him support. We're going to give him one um, regiment to go fight in the war. But he will start. He will start a war for us with the Tetwas, and then we will get in when the war is underway. So everyone is just like, yeah. They, everyone agrees, and Utlija um, is like, yeah. I will lead the regiment for us. And yeah, so it ends like that. So that was episode ten. Um, I really enjoyed this episode because we really got to see um, Shaga's growth in a, a more mature, manly and um, structured way now because he definitely sees his um, his end goal. He sees it like he can taste it. Um, and the fact that he went to a place where his mom, clever woman, Nandi, Nandi is very clever. Um, the fact that she, she even thought of taking them from to to for Shaga to get that um that mentoring from someone who is yes as wise as 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 knowledgeable and uh, as powerful as a dinosaur and he is taking it in he's not wasting it this time like he's not wasting his chances when it comes to his growth and his destiny and actually fulfilling it himself he has definitely taken matters into his own hands and that makes me proud also but i really enjoyed this episode um we definitely got to learn more about shaga and we we saw the relationship built between Shaga and Dingaswayo and uh, it makes sense um, how they, they stayed as as close as they did all these years even after um, him being groomed by him um, yeah so uh, in the next coming episodes I guess we're going to be seeing um, Shaga possibly returning back to Gazulu um, and yeah claiming what is his claiming what is his and definitely there's going to be a war between the Zulus and the Ndwandwes and the Mtetwa okay the Mtetwas and the Ndwandwes not the Zulus um, but we're definitely seeing what um, the Sanusi saw it is coming together it, it definitely is coming together because everyone sees Shaga as this person they see the potential in this man they see the power in this boy and yeah he's also just not letting himself down he is doing the work and at the end it's going to be very fruitful for him um so yeah um two more episodes guys so if you like this video give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching